Okay, today we're gonna learn a little lesson, a very basic and simple lesson about relationships. Now this might look a little bit complicated, but I think I might have another kind of simpler um, version of this. Okay, this one. Basically what you have is you have uh, a table with some information. This one is about product information. And you would like to have another table kind of related to this. And this one is a product. You have the information about the product. And this product comes from different suppliers. You have uh, different suppliers here, and whichever, with every supplier, this product has a different price. Uh, and there's a certain date at which you've entered this information. Now basically what you're doing here is you're relating your products here. You have different products, you have different importers, and you're relating them together using what's called a join table. And that kind of joins a product with an importer and then you can set a price for each relationship there. If you go to file, manage database, we will see that we are basically relating three different tables together. We have products, we have importers, and then we have a join table that combines those two and gives us some extra information like the date and the price that we've entered this information. And that in the end will give us something like this, uh, basically where you have some product information and you can uh, select an existing importer if you would like, or uh, if you want, you could even create a new one using these top fields here. So basically what we're gonna start with is a very simple relationship and a join table, and we're gonna learn some new funky stuff along the way. Okay, let's go. So we're gonna start by creating a new database, and I've already done this a few times. So this one is gonna be importers four for me. I've already made a few tests here. Uh, and let's go to File, Manage Database, and let's start by going to Tables, and let's create our tables. What did we need? We had Importers, Products, and a Join field, so let's start with this Importers. I'm going to take this four away and hit Change. I'm going to make Products, and I'm going to join the Products with the Importers. Okay, that's uh, very simple three tables let's double click our product so let's start with that one and let's add the fields that we need um, every product needs to have its unique id so id is a number field that i will be setting to a uh, serial number um, that, that means the ser a serial number it's entered automatically so every product has a unique uh, id a unique number uh, and i'm going to need a product name uh, product it's going to be a text field Okay, very simple, very basic. We could add a whole bunch of other information, but for this exercise, we're gonna keep it like this. Same with the importers. Every importer needs its own ID, is a number field set to auto enter a serial number, and every importer uh, needs to have a name, which is a text, and let's add country just for fun. Okay, we have an ID, an importer, and a country. Now our join table, that's gonna be a bit tricky, but we can find out what we need by um, going here we will see that we have products we have importers and we're gonna have to join them what every join table needs is like all these tables its own id i need to relate importers and products together so i'm gonna have to store the product id and the importer id and i would like to store some extra information like the price that this importer asks for this product and the date that we entered this um, this record so let's go ahead by creating an ID number field as always uh, it's gonna be auto enter serial number let's create a product ID FK uh, the FK stands for foreign key because we're entering the product ID here but that product ID actually comes from the product table so when we're storing a, an ID in another table we're gonna call that a foreign key um, the simple number field and importer ID FK just the same simple number field um, we're going to want to store a price per product and importer here. It's also a number field and we want a, a date. And it's going to be a date field, but if, uh, just so we won't forget to enter the date, I'm going to have this date entered automatically. So I'm going to double click the date and I'm going to set this one to auto enter creation date. Um, now let's go on to relationships and then we can relate our importers to the importer ID FK and our products to the product ID FK. And in fact, I'm going to flip these around because we're basically going to be basing our whole thing on the product layout. So just to make that kind of clear, we're going to set it something like this. Okay, let's hit okay and let's get cracking. 
Now this is a little bit annoying my FileMaker because it had already created this layout for me uh, before I had entered any fields. Uh, I have no fields here, but I can just simply hit modify, hit the green plus sign and select all of my fields here and add them. Okay, now I have my importers here that I could, uh, for instance, make a new, uh, new record here. I've got the first one is going to be called importer1 and the country shall be, let's say, Spain. Okay, very simple, very basic. Let's go to products and we have the same thing, except this one is not in table view, but this one is in form view. That's fine, I can make a new record and this is going to be product1. Very simple, very basic. Uh, on our join table, we're not really going to do this manually. Let's go to products and what I like to do is I like to go to edit layout and make a new layout for my product table called lay products and this is going to be a standard form. Let's hit next. We don't really want our user because basically what we're going to be making now is a layout for user data entry. Our user shouldn't be bothered by this ID so let's just add the product name. Let's choose a nice looking theme. I like this semi-rounded river one and there we go we have a nice looking let's make it a little bit bigger layout for our user to do data entry so we have a product we can create a new one product two there you go very simple very basic we can browse in between our different products uh, it's kind of empty and kind of boring right now but let's go ahead and add some stuff so what I would like to do and I can look at this by going to file manage database I'm going to be on my products page and every product can be related to, uh, can be coming from different importers and can have a different price. So I'm going to want to create records in this table here, but from this uh, layout. From my products layout, I would like to be able to create uh, join records here. So how I do that, very simple, I go to edit layout and I'm going to uh, create what's called a portal by using my portal tool here on the top. I'm going to create a box and a portal basically allows you to kind of look into an other related table and to make records there. So we're going to show re related records from this join table and then we can sort stuff. We can uh, sort stuff by date and in fact let's uh, sort it in descending order so that the newest date is on top. And then if we're not going to filter, we will allow deletion of portal records because if we enter a faulty one then we would like to be able to throw it out. And if we have lots of records, then we need a vertical scroll bar. But other than that, this is looking good. Then which fields would you like to see in this portal? I don't care about the ID because that's something that's automatically entered. I don't really use it anywhere. I don't need it. The product ID, well, if I may have a product here and I'm creating a record um, here, then this will be, because this is in a portal, this will be related automatically by FileMaker. So I don't really have to worry about this one. I do have to select an importer, so let's add this importer ID. I want to enter a price and the date will get set automatically, but I would like to see it. So if we exit our layout, what do we get? A boring white box, that's not very handy. So let's add some text labels here. Let's say importer, let's say that uh, we'd like to put this over here. Then we control drag it over there, that creates a copy for the price. And we control drag it over here for the date. This is not looking very good, but I can then just kind of drag it around so that it ooh, kind of snaps to something like this. Still not very good, but let's go to position and then like so. Okay, good. Uh, the date field, we could um, go to data, make this a drop down calendar and include an icon to show on how to hide the calendar. For this price field, it's looking pretty big right now, but that doesn't really matter. We can hit these double A's, align it to uh, the right and let's make this a currency. Um, okay, looking pretty good. Let's see if this looks better. Okay, we can see the headers there, the labels, but we can't enter any data. So there is something going wrong with this relationship between our products and this field here. We know where we can manage relationships. Let's go to File, Manage Database, and in the Relationships tab, we can see that something is going wrong here on this end. So basically on, along this line. If we double click this, then we can edit this relationship and we have a few options on the bottom. We have our product site and our join site and basically we would like to create uh, records on this side and there is a checkbox here that allows it just, us to do just that. Allow creation of records in this join table via this relationship. There's also a uh, section here that's, uh, or a, an option that says delete related records in this join table when a record is really, uh, deleted in the uh, product table. What that means is what would I like to happen to my join records when I delete a product? 
basically all that price information I have uh, that is related to this product. Should it stay or should it go? If I delete a product, I don't want that to stay because that's going to be a bunch of records that are not related to anything anymore. They are of no use to me, uh, so they should be deleted. So in this case, I'm going to check this box. And let's go ahead and hit OK. This looks better already. I can enter stuff here. Nice. I can enter a price and this looks really pretty. A dollar sign in front of it and everything. And I could select a date. Um, good. OK. Nice. This is how you create records in a related table. And in fact, if we go and look at our join, and I always like to put them in uh, in table view like that, like that, then we can see that we are able to enter new records in this join table. Okay, this is already pretty good, but we're not entirely there yet. This field is one where we have to manually enter stuff, and that's not really the point. Let's go to edit layout, and let's see. This one is actually uh, supposed to contain the ID of an importer. And I have a bunch of importers in my importer table, so I would like to be able to select an existing importer. How do we do that? Let's make this a drop-down list. Uh, we don't have any drop-down lists yet, so let's hit this pencil and create a new one. And we're going to create one for our importers. Uh, we're not going to use any custom values because we're going to use values from a field. In fact, the ID field is the one we need from the importers table because we need to store the importers ID in that field over there. But the ID is useless to us. But what we can do here is also display values from a second field, namely the importer field. And in fact, we're going to go ahead and show values only from the second field. Let's see what that gives by clicking all these OK buttons. Let's exit our layout and let's see. I've only got one importer. In fact, let's make a few more here just so that we can prove our point. Importer 2 is from Italy. And let's even create an importer 3 from, let's say, uh, USA. Okay, let's go back to our layout here and we can select whichever importer we want. Pretty good, pretty good, but we're still um, kind of missing something um, that um, is... Uh, I'm showing these IDs here right now. That's not very handy for me. Let's see if we can find some way to solve this. We're going to go to edit layout. What we're going to do is we're going to control drag this field over there. That makes a copy of this field and then I can specify what field that needs to be and that needs to be my importer name. I don't want to create a label for this one. Let's just hit OK and let's check this out. OK, good. I have my importer ID here. I have the name here and when I select an importer here then the name shows up. But then this gives me a drop down box as well because I copied that one. That's not good. And let's see if we can make this a little bit better. First of all, this one doesn't have to be a drop down list but an edit box. It's just going to show the name. And actually what I would like to do is I don't want to have to deal with this ID. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the ID field with this field. That's why I made a copy. It's exactly the same size. But then if I do that, I can't enter any data into this ID field and I can't use that drop down box. So what I can do to prevent that is to make sure that the top one does not allow entry in browse mode, but it does allow entry in find mode because if I'm going to find an importer, I want to find him by his name and not by his ID. And this one then does not have to be available in find mode, but it does have to be available in browse mode. And if we make those settings, then we can select uh, both fields by using shift and we can align them like so. And let's see what that gives. It gives us our importer name. We can select an importer and it just gives us our name. And if we click on this field again, we can see that we're actually still entering the ID into our ID field. But if I select one, I just see the names and I don't have to deal with the IDs and I am happy. Okay, what else can we do to improve this? A uh, little important thing that's missing here, I've entered here these test things, but I can't get rid of them. So let's fix that. Let's go to edit layout. In fact, we can make this price field a little bit smaller and then we can get this date field to move over. And in fact, that could be made a little bit smaller as well. Let's move it like so. Okay, now we have a lot of room here. Let's create a text field called the elite. And let's place it somewhere over there. Oops, like so. And let's make our portal to match. Okay, we're gonna make this a button. And we're going to give it an action of uh, 
delete portal row. Now you have to be careful because it also says del delete record request, but deleting a record on this layout on the product uh, table will delete a product. I don't want to delete a product, but I want to delete a portal row. So let's do that. And what I always like to do for my button, I like to give it an underline and make it nice and blue so that if you look at it, it looks like it's a hyperlink that you can click. And if you click this one, it will delete all those portal rows. So that's quite handy. Okay, one thing left to do, we can select our importers here, but we've only got three. What if we have a new product here, product three, and we would like to select uh, or create a new importer, then we would have to go here to importers and create a new one, and then go back here and then enter that one uh, or select that one, and that's not very handy. But the problem is when we go to file and manage database, we can see that from this layout, we can create records in this uh, uh, table, but uh, we can't create records two relationships away, that's too far. So what we need to do is need to find a way to relate this one to uh, this one, and then we can create uh, new importers straight from this layout. Um, what we would like to do for that, or um, what we're gonna do now, is create a new table occurrence. And that's a funky thing that people uh, sometimes don't seem to understand. Um, so let's try and see if we can make uh, this whole thing a little bit clearer. And in fact, what I would like to do on this layout is create a few uh, fields where I can like select an importer uh, temporarily and create a new one if, if I want. And then I'm gonna create a button that uh, flies all this information right into this portal. Um, let's see how we can do that. Let's go to File Manage Database. Um, let's go to Products here and let's create a temp in Order ID FK as a number field, and um, in fact, let's create a temp price as well, so that we can uh, just create, uh, just select an importer or create a new one, enter a price, and just fly all that information down. Um, let's go to Edit Layout and let's add a few new fields here. Let's add them underneath here. This one is going to be from the products table, our temporary importer ID. And in fact, let's make this one go down a bit. So we have some more room. We're gonna copy this one down. This is gonna be a temporary price. I didn't create a label for this one, so let's double click and create a label. And okay, we have our fields. So not very nicely lined out, but that's not too important right now. Okay, um, we can enter a, an importer ID here, uh, but uh, we haven't made a relationship for this one yet. So let's go to File, Manage, Database. So what we have now here is this new importer ID field, and we can use this one to link to the importers. But because there is already a relationship like this, we can't create a relationship from here straight to there because that would create some sort of a loop. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to control drag our importers uh, down. And this creates importers too. And you might be thinking, well, this is kind of silly. We've just copied a table, but in fact, we haven't. If we go to tables, we will see that we still have one, two, three tables, but we do have two occurrences of this table here, importers and importers too. What that means is uh, we did not copy our data or duplicate our data, our data will still be stored. If you look here, this source table is importers and this source table is also importers. Our, all our data will be stored in our importers table, but because we've created a new table occurrence, we are able to make different kinds of relationships. Um, so let's make a relationship like so. And in fact, let's double click this one to give it a more logical name. Importers, temp, uh, products. <clears throat> okay, now we have our products table and we basically have two importers. We have a temp importers table occurrence here and another one right here. Let's hit OK. What we can do now is we could add a field from that new table occurrence, that new importer stamp, and let's enter the um, importer name here, and let's enter its country here. Something like this. Now, if I enter the correct ID, I will see this importer's information. But again, entering an ID manually is not handy, but we've done this one before. Let's make this one a drop-down list for, uh, of importers. And let's see, now we can select an importer and we could um, see this importer's information showing up right there. You do have to make sure that you get the, um, 
the f these fields from the correct table occurrence. Uh, if you get it from the importer table occurrence, it won't work. Um, okay, what we can do now is a nice trick. If we clear out this one, we empty it, then we have no values here. And in fact, we can not create anything here yet. So let's uh, fix that. We also know how to do that by going to File Manage Database and editing this relationship to allow the creation of records in this importer table through this relationship. Um, would I like to delete an importer in when I delete a product? No, because this importer can be related to other products, so I don't want to delete it. So in this case, this checkbox is not a good idea. Let's hit OK and OK, and then we could enter some data here. Importer, I think I had three, so this one's going to be four from, let's say, the Netherlands. Okay. Now, if I look here, I've got a fourth one that I just created from here. So if I have a new record, a new product, product four, and uh, this comes from a new importer, importer five, I can just create it here, enter his, his country right there, and it's a new importer that I have created. Now, uh, what I would like to do is be able to fly this information into this um, table um by using a script so let's go and create that script okay first let's think about what we need when we go to our join products we will see that we need uh, we don't need to enter the id because uh, this is entered automatically we need the product id the importer id and the price the date is also set automatically now uh, if we are on this product on this layout and we create uh, a record here then we can just uh, choose the importer and the price uh, but when we use a script to get the values from here to there, we manually need to set this product ID because it's not going to be set automatically. It only gets set automatically if you enter data into a portal. Let's make a script and let's call this script um, set uh, into portal. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to remember a few values and take them with us. So what we, that's called setting a variable and a variable has um, these two uh, important settings here. A variable can have a name and a value. Um, the value for this one is going to be my product ID. And let's um, call this one product ID. Now, if we tap out of this field, you will see that it gets a dollar sign in front of it. That's uh, how you name a variable. A variable always has one or sometimes two dollar signs in front of it. Two dollar signs is a global variable, but let's not get into that right now. Um, so we have our product ID that we need to get take with us. We need to take with us our importer ID uh, that's uh, set in this temp field right here. And we need to set another variable for our price. Price, and that's going to be that temp price value that we created right there. Okay, so we need to set those variables. That means we need to remember these values. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to this layout, to this join layout, and we're going to create a new record. So let's go to layout, layout join, and then let's um, new records request. Let's set a new record. And then we're going to be setting those fields that we have remembered. So when we create our new records, we will then use a set field step we can specify the field in our joint products importers i would like to set the product id and the value is going to be this variable that i've created before so that's dollar sign product id make sure you don't make any typos and let's do the same thing for our importer id that's going to be dollar sign importer id I hope I'm not making any mistakes because what you could also just do is go to this price here and control copy the name of that variable and then set this price to be a control V the price okay um, so what we're doing is we're remembering these values we're going to our join layout we make a new record we set these values and then we're stuck on this layout that's not good so let's go to layout original layout control save to save the script then let's go back to our layout here. We have uh, an importer here, we have importer five, let's set a value in this field and then let's run uh, this script here, see what it does. It creates a value here, exactly correctly. It's uh, our importer five for $45 uh, on this date, which is set automatically. This is pretty good, but I don't want to use this. So let's create a button. Let's go to exit layout. Let's create a button. Let's go, let's let it perform our script, our set into portal script. 
and let's uh, give this a text of set into portal. Okay, let's hit enter, and in fact, let's go back to button setup, and let's check this uh, change to hand cursor. I like that one. Exit layout, and now we can just hit this button as many times as we want. However, that's not a good idea, because now I've created all these duplicate records, um, and that's probably not a very good idea. So let's try and find a way to uh, fix that. A good way that we can solve this problem is by adding some stuff to our script. Let's say um, at the end, when I've done all of this, I would like to clear those fields so that they're empty and then I can't enter this data again. So let's go to a find our clear here. We specify the fields we'd like to clear. We like to clear our temp field here, uh, there and then we'd like to clear our price field and then just for good measure we're going to add a commit record request step so that we don't uh, our cursor doesn't stay uh, stuck into a, in a certain field or something like that so that these changes are actually saved let's hit Control s let's uh, check this out we have this one we clicked our, our button and let's uh, take a look at what happens here these are cleared and uh, this uh, these, but these fields here are empty and are now ready to enter some new information. Uh, one problem though, I can now make all these new rec these empty uh, records, so that's not a good idea. Let's add one more thing to our script. And let's add a check in the beginning that checks to see if I've actually got some values in here. What we're gonna use is an if statement. Um, let's go to the top, let's hit if, and that creates if and an end if step. Uh, I would like this one to go down a bit because I wanna start with my if, and I'm gonna double click this one and I'm gonna uh, make an if statement that checks whether this is empty or not. And the way to do that is to write is empty. And then we create these brackets and in these brackets we put our uh, temp importer ID field. Um, and actually let's go ahead and add an or is empty the price field. If our uh, product ID is empty or our price is empty, this button should not work. Um, and uh, in other words, the script should halt. But I would like to give my user a little bit more information. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a beep and a custom dialog, and I'm gonna put them in the correct order. First, I would like to hear my beep, then I would like to show my dialog, and then I would like to halt my script. So this one's gonna say, whoops. You need to enter, uh, you need to select, select um, importer and enter a price. I don't need two buttons for that. I don't need the cancel, I just need the okay. So if uh, either one of those fields is empty, I'm gonna have a beep, a custom dialog, and my script is going to stop. Let's save and try this one out. Uh, I've got no values in here, so I'm gonna beep. click this one, and it says you need to select an importer and enter a price. I'm going to uh, select an importer. Beep. Oh, but I did not enter a price. So let's enter a price, and there you go it does this and then you can hit it again but you can't accidentally create all those empty records there i think this looks about pretty good i think this was a nice exercise i hope you guys learned something and if you have any questions make sure to uh, put them in the comments i'll try and make this file available to you guys so you can have a look at it and see what's what bye bye